So welcome, fans of The Chosen. It is with great pleasure today that I get to introduce you, one of the cast members of The Chosen, Giovanni Cairo, is here today to talk to us. Uh, welcome, Giovanni. So That's glad to awesome. have you here. Yeah, man, it's good to see you. I'm glad to, uh, glad to talk to everybody. And yeah, let's I, have think, I think the fans will be delighted today to kind of get behind the scenes, um, some personal stories. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this series uh, has hit the mark in a lot of areas. I, I know it has multi-million views. I'm not sure how many. Do you know? Yeah, I mean, I was looking earlier today. It's pretty crazy. It's hit. It's near five and a half million, I think, right now. Awesome. It's, awesome. Uh, yeah, man. It's it's we're really blessed and like really appreciative of everybody who's who has supported the show. It's really cool to see just how many people it's it's uh, it's been viewed by and that it's affecting. So you know, we're well, excited. Let's, let's let's dive right into this. Yeah. Um, how did you uh, get the role of Thaddeus, and how is that? You know, what challenges did that bring to you as an actor? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll try not to bore you with the uh, with the normal, like, oh, my a agent got me an audition. I went to audition, and yeah, I got the... No, I won't, I won't try to bore you with that. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's really, it's interesting. Um, you know, a few months before auditioning for The Chosen, um, I, was, I was at a point where I'm, I'm sure like a lot of actors are to where it's kind of like you're hitting kind of like that wall to where like nothing's really happening you know you're not really auditioning that much you're booking and you know also my faith was being questioned kind of too so it was like a yeah a lot of stuff was going on there but uh you know I ended up taking this this self-transformation course for a few months to where you focus on different areas of your life and you know you get really specific about what you want and you know the, the main three things that I was really focusing on were you know, my relationships, uh, my career, and also I wanted to practice my faith more as well. Um, so, you know, with, with doing that, I was, you know, focusing a lot more on my career, focusing a lot on my faith, and I didn't know, you know, how it was going to happen, but two of my main things were, you know, I wanted to book a series and, you know, strengthen my faith. Didn't know how it was going to happen, and I just... Awesome how that all kind of came together. It's yeah, it's crazy. I right? just try. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to trust the process as much as I could, and you know, back in it must have been a few months before we started filming. I got an audition for uh, for the chosen. Didn't know what it was at the time. All I knew it was like it was a biblical, you know, series. Which I was like, okay, let's let's do it. And I I actually auditioned for the role of uh, Simon. Ah, yeah. Yeah, which was really interesting. I think one of the hammer scene was uh, was one of the scenes that I did um, where I talked with Andrew in the scene. And it was like three scenes prepared, you know, sent that in over a self-tape. Um, and I got a call back for that. And they wanted me to read for Andrew, but they wanted me to be in Texas for the callback. And just financially, I couldn't swing it and I wasn't going to be able to do it. So I get that. Yeah, yeah. So it was really hard, but at the same time, I didn't know what the project was too, um, and it was kind of crazy just because uh, we tried to get like a, a Skype audition for the callback, and we didn't know how it was going to come about. So we didn't hear anything for like, you know, two three weeks. And at that point, I was just like, okay, it's fine. We'll, you know, on to the next. Um, and thankfully, very blessed that you know, Dallas was allowed me to to do the callback over uh, a self tape again, and yeah, had a had a Skype with Dallas after that, and they were like, I don't know what we're gonna cast you as, but you know, we're gonna try, we're gonna make this work. So awesome, I'm, awesome. Yeah, man. Well, good for you. Good for you. That's that's good news. I mean, to be in such an amazing project, uh, which leads to my next question. I mean, with cast and crew, was there kind of a consensus on set where you talking behind scenes and so forth where you knew you knew how big this project was from the get-go or was it kind of like through filming you're like wow this is a little larger in scope than we were thinking no you know I, I knew we were we were doing something special I, I I felt that but I didn't know how big that was gonna be and I don't I don't know the others to where how they felt about that exactly but um it was it was weird, man. It was just like really felt like like everybody was brought on that project for for a specific reason. And 
you know, we all knew that we, you know, we were telling this incredible story that you know, so many people were passionate about. But I don't think any of us knew how big we were getting our, like what we were getting ourselves into for the most part. But I can tell you, like everybody on that set, it's like family, man. It's from the cast to the crew. I've never been on a set to where there's no egos. And it's really rare to see that where everybody's just clicking and even offset, just everybody is just seems to get along and have fun with each other. And yeah, it's, it's. And that carries through. There's such an authenticity between all the characters. And you talk about, you mentioned family. Yeah. It's, it's believable. Um, you and I've talked about this before. I like, what I like about the narrative structure, the storytelling, is that usually when you watch a biblical story, you're kind of watching from a distance. Right. And with The Chosen, I feel like you're in the mix. You're in the gospel. And I think that's a really good way to tell the story, which leads to my next question. So. The Chosen is about the historic ministry of Jesus told through the eyes of those in his care. Mm -hmm. But the story is obviously embellished for dramatic effect. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, it's because there's been so many. I, I was never really educated in like biblical, you know, biblical films, biblical like television before The Chosen. Um, but I did know there was there was a strong consensus of it being like, something that people really couldn't relate to it was uh you know it's telling the story but i think a, what dallas really preached and uh, what a lot of us really preached is we wanted these characters to be relatable because yeah yes these were people that you know they had flaws just like you and me they walked the earth just like you and me had senses of humor had obstacles that they had to overcome and i think you know like any story you watch what's what's one of the main things probably the main thing is you want to be able to relate to these people mm -hmm. now you want to be able to be like hey maybe i'm not going through the exact same thing but i can feel what they're feeling and that's something that we thought was very important so we wanted to make these characters like we want to make these characters real and we wanted to tell the story obviously mm -hmm. this story has been told before not in this way through the eyes of you know the people Jesus had contact with and his disciples, but not only that, we want to make people real because it's a real powerful way to tell the story. And for example, the scene where Simon is sitting with Andrew on the shores of Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. and they're discussing the possibility of losing their boat, right? Because they're fishermen, and see that to me is one of the powerful aspects of the way the story is told is it makes it real because it was real. Where are you going? Going to work. Work? It's Shabbat in an hour. Well, the Pharisees make allowances for that if lives are at stake. No one's life is at stake. No, no, not this moment, but it's coming. What are you gonna tell your bug-eating friend about it? No, 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 no. Just me. Not dragging into this. What about Eden? She's staying at her Emas tonight. You're crazy. You know that? Nah. Just desperate. Exactly. So I, I don't have a problem with embellishing as long as the framing is strong, and the Chosen definitely is. I mean, I don't think they're reinventing Jesus. They're actually making him more real, in my opinion. Oh. No, 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 no. But I think, yeah. yeah, but I think a big thing with that, too, is, like, I think where people lose it sometimes is, like, they think of, like, Jesus as, like, oh, he's this guy that was nothing like anybody else, and he's, like, and... Mm -hmm. Distant. He was distant, right? So you couldn't mm -hmm. relate to him. And, you know, Jonathan Rumi, who plays, who plays Jesus, does an incredible job at really humanizing him. Because he was someone that was just like you and me, right? He, he was did a great. He did a great job. He does. I, mean, I was. He, I was just kind. Of, he had that balance of being. I felt like there was something mysterious about him, mm -hmm. but you could approach him. I do hope you come with us, Nicodemus.
What are you doing? Kiss the sun. Lest he be angry and you perish in the way. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, man. He does an incredible job. So, then this kind of leads into, I wanted to kind of talk to you about this because I think it's really important. So faith-based entertainment generally kind of goes one of two directions. Mm -hmm. it either goes um, kind of standard fare. It's really entertaining Christians. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting this notion down. Edify, equip, encourage. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And entertain. But then there's another way to go in faith-based where you're not going for the believing market. You're going for the non-believer. Do you think that Chosen bridges that gap? Yeah, I mean, I think it's on its way for sure. Um, you know, because obviously, like you said, you know, you want to you want to entertain, right? I mean, we're in that type of business. You want to entertain with a, with a great story. Um, and obviously the Christians, too. It's like, yeah, you want to tell the greatest story ever told. But at the same time, you don't want to. We don't want to just tell the story. We want to tell it, you know, the right way. And we want it to be relatable. Um, and I think with like, you know, people who, you know, have different beliefs and that's fine. You know, this is a great story overall, you know, and I, you know, I have buddies, I have friends that have watched the show and even beforehand, they're like, oh, well, you know, it's like, it's a biblical show, you know, and they have different beliefs. Um, but after watching it, it's like, okay, wow, I can relate to these characters, you know? And I think that's something that, I think that's something that's so uncommon in a faith-based show a lot of the time. It's like, hey, we want to relate to these people. Yeah, uh, and so it, it is, it's powerful by doing so. Again, like I said, you feel like you're in the middle of the gospel instead of watching it like a stage production. Exactly. And I, and I think that that's, I mean, this, the way the story's told, the narrative is so powerful in this. I, you know, I, I love the writing in the show. It blows me away. So, so, which leads me to naturally to my next question. So, what, what's your favorite scene in season one? Man, there's too many scenes that I. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick question. Uh, you know what, man? I mean, like, there's so many good ones. I mean, you can go with the miracles of the fish. I mean, I know that's a fan favorite from from episode four, and that was incredible. Amazing, amazing shot. Yeah, I wish I was in the water running with those guys trying to get the fish into the boat. I had to be on the, on the sidelines there on the beach, but you know what? It, it all came together. <laughs> I'm an incredible job, an incredible job with that. Um, but a, a scene that really stands out for me is uh, it's between uh, uh, Eden Simon, you know, played by, uh, by Lauren Shahar, and it's a scene to where uh, Eden is is crushing the grapes, and Simon comes and he tells her oh, yeah, yeah. that he's that he's seen the Messiah, um, and just what has happened. The, the teacher, uh, Andrew, told me, but I didn't believe him at first. He's the Messiah. I know it sounds impossible, but I I saw it with my own eyes. He made boatfuls of fish appear out of nowhere, and the words he spoke, the one John told Andrew was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It was him. And then, and then he called me to follow him, and Andrew, James, and John to go where he goes and, and to learn from him. And he said that I wouldn't be a fisherman anymore, but that I would catch people instead. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I'm sure what I saw. He's the one we've been waiting for all our lives, and I want to quit fishing and leave the sea behind to go 
I know, I know, I know it makes no sense, and I knew it would make you upset. All I can tell you is that this I'm not is. Upset. travel sometimes. I don't want you to feel abandoned. You have to go with him. How could I feel abandoned? I feel saved. Eden, Eden, it's not gonna be easy. When have we ever had anything easy? <laughs> it's not our people's way. <laughs> and Eden's overwhelmed with emotion and the way those two played off each other and the chemistry those two have I mean it's beautiful to watch if you haven't seen that I believe it's it's episode five um, I believe those guys just have so many so much great chemistry playing off each other it's just a beautiful moment of being like see I told you or like you know I'm so I'm, I'm so blessed and I'm so happy of, uh, for what's going on and the relationship between those two is beautiful to watch I like the stone mason scene with you, with Thaddeus. Oh, the, the wedding at Cana. Was your father a stone mason as well? Smith. I think it broke his heart, but I apprenticed under a stone cutter when I was nine. Every man must leave his father. Masonry seems like harder work. <laughs> it isn't harder, it's just more uh, final. If the smith wants to change the horseshoe or the plowshare or the pot hook, he has only to put the iron back into the fire and reshape it to fit his designs. Therefore, Everyone, please step outside. Once you make that first cut into the stone, it can't be undone. It sets in motion a series of choices. What used to be a shapeless block of limestone or granite begins its long journey of transformation. And it will never be the same. I'm ready, Father. I just think that that's great. And I love that line by Simon where he says, the kids are playing with Jesus. And they, he says, they have no idea who they're with right now. I 
They have no idea who sits before them. <laughs> to be a child again, yes? <laughs> and that, again, relatable. Bringing him down to our world, bringing him down to where he's accessible. He's not floating around. He's in the midst. And then the fact that you find out that he built a latrine, you don't even want to mention it because there's a because Mary's nearby. He's a stonemason, like you. A craftsman. He taught as well. He asked me to follow him. He said he was building a kingdom, a fortress stronger than stone. I believed him. What were you building in Bethsaida? <laughs> uh, uh, a public amenity. An aqueduct. No, of uh, something uh, humbler. What then, man? It's, it's not proper to say in front of a woman. I have seen and heard things that would turn your blood to ice. A latrine? <laughs> Wait, ice? Yes. Our master building a privy. A job <laughs> is a job. I've, I was cutting stone for the retaining wall. He, he was building a ramp of cedar planks so the crippled and the elderly could get to it without climbing the steep stairs. I thought that was a nice added little touch. Now, there's an, there's an example of embellishing that works really well. I don't believe that's in the Bible, but he most assuredly could have done that. And if he needed to do that, he would have. Exactly. I think that's the whole point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So... Um, how has your playing one of the disciples changed your life in spiritual tones? Has there been any change? I mean, do you look at things differently or? You no, know, it's, I would say, yeah, it's, it's strengthened. I think the biggest thing it's, it, it's strengthened my trust and just, tr I guess, trusting that everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to. Um, like I said, you know, before being part of the chosen, hitting that wall of being like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why certain right. things are happening. Um, but like these disciples that have followed him, there's been a lot of doubts, you know, like in mm -hmm. especially Simon, like he sees the miracles that are happening around him. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know why I was picked. You know, I don't know exactly what we're doing here. Um, but still choosing to trust the process, choosing to go about that. So I think with me, that's brought a lot into my life as to, you know, things are going to come up, right? You know, obstacles Definitely. are coming. And it's, it's, it's life. You know, we don't know why certain things happen a lot of the time. Um, and we have two choices, right? We have two choices in terms of like we can, you know, complain about it. And we can kind of bail out or be afraid to take that step. Or we can be like, you know what? I don't know what I'm getting myself into. But it's not going to stop me from going after what I want. I'm going to trust what's going on. I'm going to trust the process and just keep going forward. And usually when you do that, great things happen. And it comes out of left field a lot of the time, too. You don't know how exactly it happened. but Definitely. Yeah. That's the way, that's the way most of life seems to play out. <laughs> it does, right? And But when you're in it, when you're in that whatever you want to call it, it's kind of like your fate's tested a lot of the time and you're just like, you know what? Oh, yeah. You got you to make that choice. So, uh, funny scenes. Was there a, one of the actors was kind of the, the class clown. I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot of humor oh, on yeah. set now and then just to kind of release some of the depth, the tension, because yeah. you know, pretty, pretty profound and deep thematic elements throughout. Exactly, and you'd be surprised at how much how much fun we have offset and onset with a lot of these guys. I remember, and you could thank Nick Shakur who plays uh, Zebedee for this one. He he reminded me of this the other day. We were grabbing lunch. Um, he was saying, uh, "We I forgot what it was. it was. I think it was like the first week of filming, and we were on set, just like like waiting to go on for like the next scene." And it was either him or George pulls out his phone. And I don't know if you know the, the artist, uh, Rick Astley. Oh. Yeah. You know Rick yeah. Astley? Never going to give you up. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down. Yeah, exactly. Actually, it's kind of a cool song. I guess I just admitted that to a bunch of people. Never, never, it is. It's a pretty cool song. Yeah. But, I mean, one of them started playing it. And they were, I don't know if he, they were doing, like, a little dance number two. <laughs> it went from, like, yeah. It went from, like, Nick. 
to George, and then uh, Kian was getting into it, and then I just started getting into it. So that became like something we always did, whether it was like after set going to dinner, we would just blast that in the car and all start singing, and then other cast members would be getting involved, even like silently on set. They'd be like mouthing it, but not really saying. I have those moments. You got to have those moments. You yeah, make- definitely. Well, with those guys, it's hilarious. I mean, there's always something funny to be, you know, to be said between those guys. And, you know, it'll be like uh, me and little James would just be throwing the football around too, like uh, waiting for, uh, not waiting for the next scene, but, you know, if we're like near the trailers or something like that. So just imagine two disciples throwing the football around. They should pull that in for a scene. What is that? <laughs> they should pull that in for a scene. Oh, Part of a make a cut. <laughs> I'm sure we have footage of that somewhere. So, <laughs> yeah, man, it's 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 a blast with those guys. Like I honestly, man, it's a it's a family. That crew, that cast, yeah, I love them all. Awesome to hear. Speaking of cast, uh, Jonathan Rumi, who obviously plays Jesus, mm-hmm. just recently won for Movie Guide. So basically, he wins this award that's, you know, kind of like getting an Oscar award for Faith Base. Is he really as cool as he looks like he is? I mean, <laughs> did you spend a lot of time? With, I mean, he's playing Jesus, but I just liked his... I saw him when it was kind of cool because he was actually videotaping it. As if he was just going to videotape the person who who got the award and then it was him. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy, you know. He deserves it, man. We were so happy for him. Um, you know, the commitment that guy puts in. And he's such a, he's just such a good dude. And he cares about all of us. And you can tell he just, he put his heart and his soul and just everything he's got into this role. He, he, he did. But the thing I really like about his performance is it's very powerful, but very subtle. Yeah. He's kind of reigns in you know, at times and just kind of hold, holds back. But it just, it really did. It, it does. He, it blew me away. I was it, like, wow. He is. He's, and he's just so vulnerable and open and he's, he's able to receive and he get, he's as an actor, you know, he just gives so much to you. Um, just makes you feel safe and that you can take chances. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. So what are your next steps? After, oh. You know, you've got this, the chosen, hopefully we'll get season two. I would think so. That's My goodness. Uh, and, and that's the but intention. other creative opportunities as an actor, I mean, are you looking at uh, other projects that you can talk about? Yeah, I mean, nothing specific as of now. Um, okay. You know, just trying to audition as much as possible. But honestly, man, my my focus and my intention is, you know, I think like everybody, we just want to shoot season two, man. Awesome. Uh, awesome. You know, we're really blessed and like really – really just blessed and appreciative of all the fans and everybody who's you know took the time to support us and watch the show and we just want to do it right it's it's it great right. that uh i mean i know you guys are the production is doing very well i know that you guys have lots of challenges ahead but with how many people are viewing you in, in such a short time i really think you're going to get i think the production team wants to do like eight seasons. If that's, I remember correctly. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. It's like seven or eight seasons. Um, you know, Dallas was talking about. So, I'm not opposed to that at all. <laughs> so, thanks so much, Giovanni, for for meeting up today with the fans. Um, and I know that this is going to be a thrill for them because, boy, the fans are really stout for this. They're, they're digging it. We're excited, man. We're just we're. Like I said, we're just trying to do it the right way. And, you know, it's it's humbling being a part of something that, that means so much to so many people. So, you know, we're just going to continue doing it the right way. Well, we hope that we see you in season two. And Sorry. I bet you we will. But uh, again, I- thanks for the time. And, man, I hope we get to chat again. Dude, I will. Well, I wanted to ask about Encounters as well, your show. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, I think our episode, which is called Crosshairs, drops tomorrow. But regardless, there's we're on the second episode of eight for season two on Pure Flix, where the, you can find The Chosen as well. Well, you got to be and excited. Regardless if it's Crosshairs or another episode. Yeah. 
tune in if you can. Absolutely, guys. You should. <laughs> I'm going to take well, again, it. Thanks so much, uh, Giovanni, and have a good time, and we will connect again soon. All right? Sounds good, my friend. We'll talk soon. Take care. Bye. 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 And we bring trouble. Trouble going to find you here. Trouble. Hey, it's Dallas from Creator of the Chosen, and if you liked what you just saw, and you want to see the episodes of the first ever multi-season show about the life of Christ, you can do so right now for free. Yes, if you get the Chosen app, you can watch these episodes for free right now. You're going to go to thechosen.tv or the Apple Store or Google Play, download the app, and you can watch immediately episodes one through four. Hope you enjoy it, and thanks so much. So this is very important. This is, this is now, ignore that hand. This is coffee time. You have to catch this on video. It's coffee time, all right? So this is the amount of coffee I'm gonna drink. It's gonna hype up your world. It's gonna hype up mine. Now we wait. <laughs> Magic from Kabundu. What? Are we waiting? Okay. Magic people. Well.